Well, it's mid-morning. It's going to be another sunny, hot, dry day in June. Getting up into the mid-90s now. This is the front yard. I talked about all the trees along the driveway. Got this magnificent pecan tree. I talked about this Shamard oak, which is one of my favorites. I I grew up with a Shamard oak across the street from me as a kid and uh, it was it had to be one of the biggest trees in town it was just absolutely gigantic we used to climb up in it and so that's why I planted one hoping to recreate that I guess and it's a uh, boy it's a big tough one it's not that tall yet but it's got a lot of new growth it's doing great there's the red bud. That one had a hybrid grafted onto it, and I finally cut it off a few years ago, and it's done done better. I didn't notice it when I bought it and planted it, but over the years I noticed this one growth coming off the uh, trunk that was different, a little bit different leaves. And after I cut that off, it really took off doing much better and then the landscaping with the bushes and flowers at the front of the house and that's another small that's a small river birch I planted in frustration for something to grow there I planted I believe it was called a Kwanzaa cherry there which had the first few years it, it took off a little bit and bloomed and was doing good and then died. And out of frustration I planted this river birch which I knew would grow fast is probably not what I should have done but I did. Just to get something going I was frustrated by the loss of time as I am as I discussed earlier with these two crepe myrtles. We need to transplant those and move them, put trees in, and with that, that Colorado blue spruce. Um, it's so big I can't move it. I'll just leave it there. And then the pin oak by that. And then I have the large red maple out by itself that's done great there. And in re response to that, I planted another red maple in 2013 here trying to avoid the direct sunlight glare of the mid-morning Oklahoma sun but it's right there it's doing wonderful and then I had the larger river birch which I mentioned before it's huge it's doing good this year finally it dropped a lot of branches and they're not very heat tolerant plus they need water and had the drought in 2011 and 12 and it's bounced back now and I haven't trimmed it or anything just letting it grow and then I had the silver maple I planted in 02 I believe that's the only silver maple I've got. It's right there. It's a large tree now. And then this pin oak over here, or I'm sorry, post oak. I planted it at the same time as the silver maple. And boy, that's one stout, st strong tree. It's tall. Boy. Those wind storms come through, it doesn't budge. All the, it's rather windy out here. We're kind of off the slope of a 
uphill and they all get a lot of wind they get pretty strong then this is just I bought these two bushes in this evergreen and I originally had them out by the driveway where those crepe myrtles and their new red maple are and they didn't do anything and I had a poplar tree here that had problems for years and finally died in the drought and I cut it down in 2012 August 2012 it died out completely after it struggled and struggled and at a I couldn't there the stump I cut it down the ground but the the roots and stump were still in there so I I put I moved the drug them over here they were so heavy these two green bushes they're a landscaping bush you see around I don't know the name of them and that evergreen and just put them in there around the stump I didn't know what else to do or I couldn't really plant another tree like I say because of the existing stump and the uh, roots so I just put those there I didn't want to kill them or throw them away I'd spent years growing those and already had that area open for something and so I just put them there metal arcs are singing bluebirds saw the Baltimore Oriole this morning mockingbirds still hanging out Eddie's out here sunning himself my little Karen Terrier looking around he says, okay, well, I'm leaving. Why are you pointing, why are you coming over here pointing at, pointing that at me? He doesn't like it. Then I have crepe myrtles in the landscaping here and Rosa Sharon and some other just, I don't even know what they are, just landscaping bushes and flowers. And Linda manages the flowers. And I just went around and checked for wasps now that it's drying out. They like dry weather. Had one new wasp nest. That's 14 I've sprayed and killed this year. I get them when there's one wasp just starting and I go ahead and spray the nooks and crannies around the patio where I know they may try or either they've tried before. There's a turkey vulture flying high above. We have turkey vultures and black vultures. The black vultures migrate. There's that red maple again. And the silver maple. Barn swallows flying over. The moon's up there. It looks like about a half moon. And the pecan tree. Well, it's humid and going to get warm today. Getting hot actually. I was going to mention too when I was in the driveway walk video, I mentioned the Northern Harriers out in these fields occasionally, some winters, and how they glide along and hunt. Also up on those power lines along the county road, I get uh, some winters you'll see American kestrels sitting there. They're uh, in the falcon family. In the winter. The most American kestrels I ever saw was in southeast Colorado in the summer. Driving the back roads and little state highways, county roads, they, they'd be spaced out. They have a, obviously have some kind of, they'd be spaced out evenly along the power lines. And obviously they have a predefined and understood by American kestrels, a predefined and understood territory. And they just, just miles of them. You just see them lined up on those power lines in southeast Colorado in the summer. And it's out in an arid area. It's called the Cedar Breaks. 
far southeast Colorado. But boy, they thrive out there. And I also noticed driving the back road, you'd see the red-tailed hawks up through Oklahoma. They'd sit on the power poles and lines. And then as you, I, I should have marked it on a map, I was watching and I'd see those red-tailed hawks. And finally up in there, in very, very far southeast corner of Colorado, all of a sudden it switched over to Swainson's hawks. And all of a sudden the red tails were gone and the Swainson's hawks took over duties sitting on the power poles looking for prey. But I remember I turned a corner on a county road and it has, you know, dirt roads out in very remote areas. A lot of it's BLM land. And uh, saw my first Swainson, and, and I never saw another red tail. It'd be Swainsons after that. There's the Shamard from the other side. I'll probably get some sun glare, maybe. I put these bricks around all these trees. We counted them a few years ago. Think I did it in response to the 2006 drought, and then I, I got carried away. We counted them. I have four to 500 bricks. I'm not sure. This was the smartest thing I ever did, but they're there now. I was going to build a wall with them for a berm, but I did it. First, I just put some extra bricks from the house around some of them. I was trying to water all these trees. That was nine years ago. They were smaller and more vulnerable and put mulch. And uh, then I started buying landscaping bricks and putting around them. And it actually did come in handy in the 2011-12 drought. I had to water all the trees. Here's the west pasture, the distant tree line. There's a pond over there as well. There's the pond in my backyard, which is down through there. You can see the water. It's still full. It's not going down too fast. Some family came out and fished Saturday evening, caught some fish. Normally don't have many fish on it. Here, uh, I just heard a yellow-billed cuckoo off in the distance. And they get hummingbirds, especially when those rows of Sharon start blooming. They like those. But that leaves the pond trails all I've got left to walk through. And I'm going to mow it today or tomorrow. And then I'm going to do the video on that. And I've pretty much gone over all my trees. And I could talk about birds, I guess, indefinitely, but I won't. 